Hello everyone and thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a historic abode turned museum and educational venue that's located off of Abercorn Street out of the breathtaking Savannah, Georgia, which actually stands as one of the finest examples of English Regency architecture complete with quarters for those formerly enslaved, not just in the county or state, but in the whole of the country. Rumored to harbor a range of chilling supernatural phenomena tied to its past, are you sure you're ready to brave the history and hauntings of the Owens Thomas House and Slave Quarter? Historically, from 1816 to 1819, this weathered place of residence was constructed under entrepreneur, shipping merchant, bank president, and slave trader Richard Richardson and wife Frances Bolton Richardson, and would see design under William J. of Bath, who, while still residing in England, would have his plans sent across the pond, as it were, preceding his own arrival to Savannah following the laying of his project's foundation. Once complete, the Richardsons would reside in their new domicile for only three short, miserable years, during which time they would lose two of their children, and in 1822, Frances herself would pass on. Subsequently, through the Panic of 1819, which, contrary to how it sounds, was not an early 2000s pop-punk band, but rather the United States' first Great Depression-style financial crisis, Richardson would lose the remainder of what little fortune he'd retained and would end up selling the estate. Over the years, the formidable mansion would be passed through a number of hands and rented out to various others, until 1830 when it was purchased by local attorney and politician George Welshman Owens, who would set to work on a series of renovations and redecorations, alongside the addition of three rooms to the second story, after which, in 1833, he and his family would move in. Following Owens's death in 1856, the property would be passed to his wife and eventually to his children. Incidentally, in 1865, his daughter Margaret Wallace Owens would marry one Dr. James Gray Thomas. By 1907, Dr. Thomas would have passed on, after which a widowed Margaret would need to scramble to compensate for income. Margaret would set to work on a remodel of the carriage house and would transform it to accommodate two townhouse apartments, which she would promptly rent out. This endeavor would actually prove fruitful and would allow for she and her daughters, Mary Bedford Thomas or Maud, and Margaret Gray Thomas or Meta to continue living in the main home for the duration of their lives. In 1951, Meta would have the family home donated to the Telfair Museums, and it would actually become the first house museum in the whole of its sweeping and quite historic city. In 1976, the Owens Thomas House and Slave Quarters were designated National Historic Landmarks. In 1977, they were listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and until the 1990s, the carriage house would retain tenants within its apartments, after which they were restored and reopened to the public. In the present, the Owens Thomas House and Slave Quarters remain open to the public, offering both guided and self-guided touring options, and a slew of materials surrounding the histories of the site, its land, the various prominent families associated to its bounds, and of those enslaved locally. From early into its existence and preceding all of the death the original Richardson family endured, an assortment of spooky stories surrounding this weathered place of residence have persisted, and those who have braved its bounds have reported objects sighted moving on their own or even floating in midair, instances of furniture discovered rearranged in under impossible time frames, and encounters with a range of apparitions and clothing spanning the eras, including the likes of a spectral little girl in a blue dress with blonde hair, who has since seemingly made a habit of photobombing selfies and otherwise picture-perfect shots. One more commonly encountered entity at the Owens Thomas house is easily that of a well-built man with jet black hair who's clad in 1830s garb and who's been sighted standing in or pacing the front parlor or following and watching the living from a distance before fading away. Also reported across the property are disembodied footsteps that emanate from vacant spaces, phantom voices detected on the winds, strange knocking or scratching noises heard from within various walls or from below the ground, and a handful of accounts that tell of run-ins with a phantom in a riding coat and ruffled shirt, who's often been spied loitering around the front doorway for short periods of time, and who's been known to make an exit by walking straight through adjacent walls. Several informal investigations of the expanse have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, and orbs and odd silhouettes captured in photography and video, while others have told of ghostly faces that materialize in reflective surfaces or through windows, of encounters with shadowy figures, and of phantom wafts of tobacco smoke without source. 
Interestingly enough, unlike a good number of the other former slave properties we've covered, and despite the slave quarters here being part of the house in sight, surprisingly, it's told these quarters actually remain ghost-free because of something called Haint Blue, which is painted across their ceilings. Historically, Haint Blue was first developed on Low Country indigo plantations and was utilized initially by the enslaved and later in various other spiritual practices in order to both combat and ward off haints or boo hags, which were evil spirits who'd escape their human forms at night in order to paralyze, injure, write upon, or even outright kill their mortal victims. Notably, Haint Blue was rumored to trick these restless spirits into believing they'd stumbled into water, which in old southern lore, ghosts couldn't cross, or had fallen into the sky and thus further away from the earth and victims they felt so bound to. Lastly, possibly the most famous entity at the Owens Thomas House is that of the resident Lady in Grey, who it's believed is the specter of none other than Margaret Thomas herself. The lady is usually spied drifting about at night, especially through the gardens where she spent so many years in life, and is normally described as clad in a large grey hat and grey shawl. Notably, an inciting rumor has it the bed Margaret died in is still kept within the house, and many speculate that if this is the case, it's likely what allows her manifestation to roam her old domain with such freedom. Thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.